Hello and welcome to this week's force.com cast where we're going to talk about the query plan tool and show some examples of how you can make queries more selective. So in the past few videos we've looked at um, how Salesforce runs its query optimizer and um, how indexes in Salesforce work as well as different ways of uh, looking at selectivity within queries. So in today's uh, video what we're going to do is um, just look through finally some queries, some examples of different types of queries we're doing, ones with good indexing, ones with bad indexing, um, and also look at the query plan tool. So uh, I'm in my uh, dev org here, and it's a dev org that we've been using with the other work we've done. So we've got a number of contacts in here, um, and I'm just looking at con uh, the contacts. I've got around 424 of them in here, and uh, we're just going to be retrieving some of those. So it's not a massive volume of data, um, and we've just got all the normal standard fields and a couple of others that we've created, um, which we'll look at in a minute. So we're going to open up the developer console, and we're going to turn on the query plan tool by going to help, preferences, and in enable query plan, set that to true. So it should be checked. Save that, and a new button appears here, which is query plan. So what we can do is we can enter a query here. So I'm going to enter um, a query that I've uh, got from before. And what we've got here is we've got a simple query that's selecting uh, the ID, the name, um, a custom field, which is a, another text field, the email and title from contact, where we have an ID within a particular uh, set of IDs that we're working with. If I enter this and I press the query plan button, the system goes away and it brings up this view here. And what we get is we have um, the different information around all the different possible routes that the query optimizer can take. So Query Optimizer just presents here the different possible plans it could use uh, in order to run this query. So we've got two rows here, which means there was two different plans. The first of which um, shows us that we have uh, the ID field used as an index. It shows that it has the leading operation type of index, so that's what we're working with. Um, table scan is obviously a full table scan. It then has the cardinality of the S object that we're working with, um, and it has the type of the S object. The interesting thing to look at here is the cost. So the cost here refers to uh, a number between 0 and 1 as to how expensive the query is going to be. If the query comes out at over 1, um, it won't be run. So we need to be aware of that when we're running. We also have this cardinality value here that says how roughly how many records will be returned by this operation. So 5, which is unsurprising given we have 5 IDs here. So what this is telling us is that um, if we're using the index on ID, um, that has a cost of 0.03968. So it's a very, very low cost out of um, one. So that would be the optimal route to use. The other way of doing this is doing a table scan on 424 records. Um, and that wouldn't really return any records for us straight away. And that's got a cost of 0.67. So the best one to use is obviously the ID one. So let's now have a look at a different example. So that was obviously a very good query because we're using an index field, uh, which is ID. It's inclusive in its selectivity, so we're finding records that are in a particular set. Um, so it's a very, very good query for us to run with, and that would scale well. If we now choose another query, so we've got here, uh, again, we're selecting the ID name and some other fields um, from a contact, and we're using the account ID field on the contact, which is an index field, so the account ID field is a lookup um, to the account object. However, what we're doing here is we're using um, a non-inclusive or an exclusive or negative filter. So we're looking for all those records where this is not the account ID. And this means that the index won't be used for us. So if we hit query plan now, you can see that it's going to just go away and do a table scan for us, and it will return roughly 15 records, but it's got a very high cost here of 0.75. So that's not very useful for us. Because it doesn't use the index, we're not actually getting to use the index field there. So if we're having a negative filter in there, we won't end up using the index field. This is included on the cheat sheet that I referenced in last week's video, um, so you can go out and find out more about that. But it's a bad practice to use uh, negative filters. So one of the other things we can look at is how we can do it on a non-indexed field. So if we replace this now with This query, 
and we're using the Skype name field, which is just a text field. It's actually from our earlier video where we were creating a hyperlink to call someone on Skype. Um, and all we're checking for is where this is a name. So it's an inclusive filter. We're checking for a particular value. And if we hit query plan, oh, we've got an error. We've got the word select twice, so I must have chosen everything properly. So if we hit query plan again, you can see here it's again having to do a full table scan. So there's no index on there, nothing for us to work with, um, and it's got a very high cost of 0.819. So that's you know, not very useful for us. We want it to be much, much lower, and this wouldn't scale very well um, as we use more and more records. So again, wherever possible, use an index field. Don't just use a string field and require a full table scan. One of the other things we can look at using is um, some of the other standard index fields. So one of the fields that is indexed for us on uh, the lead and the contact object is the email field. So although this is a text field, emails are unique. Um, and so if we run this query where we're just checking for a particular email address, you can see here it uses the email field as an index and it has a cost of 0 0.0079. So it's an extremely low cost. It's a very, very fast query for us to execute. You can tell that because obviously the query plans all game back quicker. Um, and it doesn't have to go away and run the table scan. So this is the optimal query for it to run. So the query plan tool will go away and calculate this for you. So if you do want to check which query is the best one for you to use before you write your code, this is a good way of doing it. So now we've seen some basic standard indexes and um, you know, some bad searching. Let's just talk about one more thing. So I'm going to choose here to use what's a, called a non-deterministic formula field. So let's enter that query. And let's just go and have a look at the formula field we're working with. So the formula we're working with is called days since created. If we go to our contact fields here, have a look at this field. It's a number formula. And what this formula is doing is calculating the number of days between today and the created date of our contact. So this is also very useful in opportunities um, and, you know, uh, say, for example, cases and things like that. Um, but we're just doing it on contact here because we're working with it. But what's important to know is that this is non-deterministic because the system can't pre-index this. It changes every day. So obviously at midnight, this will change to be um, a value that's one greater. So the system can't pre-calculate it and can't index it for us, so it's going to run a full table scan. So if we go back to fields, we can see here another example of a field that is a cross-object formula field, um, but is deterministic. And what this does, although it's more complicated because it's cross-object, it can be indexed because it's just returning the name from our account that's related to our contact. So because that's um, an index field and because it's something that's pre-calculated and easy to index. It's deterministic, and the system can use it as an index. So if we run our query using this non-deterministic field, and we just check for all of the contacts which were created in the last 21 days, which I can tell you there won't be any of, but hit the query plan tool, you can see here that it's got an extremely high cost of 0.7158. So it's actually going to return us eight records. So I've probably created some in the past few weeks. Um, but it's got a very, very high cost here of running. Now, as this scales up, as we have more and more contacts in there, you know, I've only got 400 in there. For a large organization, you might have, you know, 40,000 contacts um, around your enterprise. And so you want to be able to scale this up. So is there a way we could rewrite the query so that we didn't have to use this formula? So you could still have the formula for you to display on the page if you wanted to, but you could query in a different way. So there are a series of different helper uh, functions and inline formulas really you can use within queries and one of them is to use the last n days so if we insert this and we have this new query here what we're doing is we're selecting all the same fields and the same object but what we're doing is we're using this last n days query formula and what that's doing is it's saying within the last 21 days the created date has been created that has been set now, created date is indexed, so when we run this and when we execute the query plan, you can see it's using an index field here, and it's going to return for us a cost of zero. And that's because there aren't any records for it to return, because it knows that there haven't been any created in the last 21 days, but it's not having to run the full table scan to figure this out. 
So it's an extremely fast query for us on our index field. So that's an overview of how to use the query plan tool and the type of results you'll get from it. The more filters you add in, the more rows you'll get here in the query plan tool and the better your analysis can be. Um, I would encourage you to go away and play with this and have a look at some of the different queries you're running in your system to see how, uh, how they operate and how it works best. This is the last video in our SOCL performance series, so I hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, next week we'll be going back to a different series of topics as we go forward.